Hey guys, back here with Tua for another video. Update pup date time, 17 months. If you're new to this channel, I do this type of video every single month on my Bull Mastiff Tua as he turns another month older. Just basically updating you guys on everything that I'm going through with him, what it's exactly like to live with a Bull Mastiff. And I started doing these videos at a very, very young age, first updating you guys weekly and now doing it monthly. And the point of these videos is just to show anybody that would be interested in doing research in the breed exactly what to expect at very, very specific ages, uh, whether that be his physical growth, if you want to know exactly how a big a bull mastiff is at uh, any certain week or month, anything like that. And then just different things like his training abilities, uh, his attitude, just everything that you could possibly imagine. I try and just show you guys exactly what I'm going through with him. And hopefully that's able to help anybody else out that is interested in the breed or currently has one and know what to expect. So if you're interested in the Bull Mastiff breed, go ahead, stick around. Alright guys, let's get into this update, pup date, 17 months video. Normally this is the part of the video where I uh, just kind of update you guys on anything new from the month that kind of stuck out, that's noteworthy, something to write home about kind of thing, other than the normal topics that I touch on every video, which is growth, food, socialization, drooling, his energy, and his barking. So for this month, for as far as like new or noteworthy things, there really wasn't like a whole lot. Uh, the only thing that really stuck out to me was just the way that his energy level has gone down when he's indoors. And I think the reason that stuck out the most to me this month is because we did spend so much time indoors this month. Uh, we've had a very weird spring here. We've had uh, insane blizzards pretty much throughout the entire state, mostly out west, uh, not so close to where we are, but we did get snow and blizzards as well. And uh, if it wasn't blizzarding, we were getting like pouring rain. It's, it's raining right now as I record this too. So we spent a lot of time indoors this month, like a lot more than I would have liked to or Tua would have liked to or that we normally would. So that's why it just kind of stuck out to me. When Tua is indoors, his energy level over the last month specifically and even kind of leading up to this month has just been very, very, very down. But when he's outdoors, it can still be very high. He'll still turn it up quite a bit. But uh, he's definitely a lazy dog when indoors. And that uh, really stuck out to me this month with how much we had been indoors. Uh, but that's all I really had for kind of new or noteworthy things from the month. Not really much to touch on. Not too much for behavior changes or anything besides that. But now I'll go ahead and get into the, the normal topics that I touch on every single video. And we'll start with growth like we normally do with his weight and his height. So starting with his height, I always tell you guys that it's a little bit difficult for me to get like a completely accurate reading on it. I always tell you, you know, give or take a quarter inch just because he's usually moving around and it's just a little bit difficult with just a tape measure or a yardstick to get that height exactly. So I kind of had a little bit of an idea to maybe give you guys a better idea of his actual height. I went ahead and measured our kitchen table and as you can see, it is uh, 30 and a quarter inches, almost exactly. And uh, I just kind of have two walking around over by it. And you can see that, you know, he's just as tall as it. And uh, I'll go ahead and measure him here as well. But uh, without having this down to too much of exact science, I'm going to go ahead and say that he's 30 inches tall there at the shoulder, at the withers. Uh, so the 16 month video we said he was 29 and a half and like I said I'm gonna call this at 30 as you can see that table is uh, 30 and a quarter and you know He's pretty much right up even with that So we'll call it 30 inches and then uh, for his weight I just got him weighed in last month at 16 months. He was 143 and a half and now this month he's 146 and a half so he did a three pound gain in one month uh, the previous month 15 to 16 month he did a three and a half pound gain 
so he's uh, kind of right on line. Uh, definitely still growing, guys. Um, very, very, very tall for a bull mastiff. And that weight-wise, uh, weight's getting up there. His dad was 150 pounds, so he's going to catch and surpass his dad with no problem whatsoever as soon as uh, next month, as soon as the 18-month mark. So incredible. Very, very, very big dog. Very tall for a bull mastiff. And going to also be heavier than the breed standard would call for as far as a bull mastiff goes. Uh, I wouldn't be shocked if he turned into, you know, a 160-pound dog. So interesting. I love it. Love big dogs. And uh, as long as he's healthy and staying lean and everything, we're good to go. And he, he is. He's healthy. He's very lean. Uh, but yeah. So now we will move on to food. And if you're a regular viewer of this channel or familiar with me at all, um, I do do a raw food and kibble mixed diet with Tua. I feel like raw has uh, many benefits. Uh, you can do your own research on it as well. But uh, raw food just has a lot of benefits for the dog. I'm on about a 65 uh, to 35 to 70 30 split with the bigger portion of that being the raw food the rest of it being his kibble and We feed him all kinds of different meats. I try and switch it up as much as I can But like this month we did turkey beef pork chicken uh, chicken gizzards chicken wings beef liver chicken liver chicken feet uh, chicken eggs all kinds of different stuff he absolutely loves it. It's kind of a cool experience for me also just to, you know, give him different foods and things like that. But definitely encourage all of you guys to look into raw food. Really good for the dog, for their skin, for the coat, and just general well-being overall. Uh, he's never had any bad reactions with any raw food that I've ever given him. Anything like that. The one thing I would say is just make sure you're washing their bowls a lot more often than maybe you normally would if you were just feeding them kibble just because of all the bacteria and stuff that can grow in there. But yeah, definitely check out raw feeding. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead, let me know as well. I'm definitely not an expert. I always say that in all these videos, but um, I'm continuing to learn. Socialization is the next thing that we'll touch on. And this was really not a good month for it. Um, kind of in the introduction, I went into why, just with kind of the crazy weather that we've been having here. I did get him out on some walks and stuff, but you know, it was just when there was breaks in the rain or uh, when there was, wasn't a whole lot of snow coming down or anything like that. So there wasn't a whole lot of people or dogs or anything, any anybody out really, you know, for him to interact with. I uh, didn't get him into any stores either, but uh, you know, we, we've socialized him so much and so often from such a young age and going forward, especially that first year. And I explain all the time how important it is to socialize these dogs. I mean, any dog in general, and especially any big dog in general. Because if, if these dogs have any issues with people or dogs, it's just going to be uh, very difficult for you to control them, possibly. Especially if you have a 150-pound dog like Tua is quickly approaching. It's just best to get them used to people, dogs, animals, certain sound, sight, smell situations early and often. I've described this as that first year is pretty much a part-time job for you to go ahead and socialize these dogs. And I truly believe that uh, to have the best opportunity for your bull mastiff to succeed and for you to also succeed as the owner is to take socialization extremely serious. Uh, However, I mean, there's going to be exceptions to every rule. If you live out in the country and you hardly ever have visitors or anything and that dog is just kind of hanging out on your property, well, then obviously socialization isn't going to be too big of a deal. But if you want them to come in contact with people, animals, all kinds of things uh, on a pre pretty regular basis, then you need to expose them to those things on a very regular basis, pretty much starting from day one. Uh, drooling is the next thing that we'll touch on. This is something that's kind of becoming very repetitive, but I want to continue touching on it for new people that aren't familiar with me or the Bull Mastiff breed, uh, haven't seen my videos, things like that. Tua is a drooler, just like Bull Mastiffs are known for. However, I don't think it's like that big of a deal. Like if this, if drooling is the one thing that's talking you out of a Bull Mastiff, I would say don't allow that to. Because yes, they're droolers, but most of Tua's drooling is related to just when he's uh, eating or drinking water. And 90% of that would be 
when he's drinking water and it's just that drool that comes out after you know dripping from his jowls so you definitely want a towel or a rag or paper towels or something in times like that and then you know if he's hot and panting and stuff outside he'll definitely get drool coming down in those moments also but if you're already used to like big dogs in general I don't think that it's going to be that crazy amount, amount of different than what you'd be used to as far as like messy times when they're eating and things like that. They definitely drool, but it's not like they're just drooling steadily all day every day at certain situations and you learn very quickly when those situations are coming and when they're going to happen and you just have a rag handy. But I, I really don't think that it's that big of a deal as much as... Uh, it's made out to be, I guess. And th that's just my personal situation. Maybe maybe two is not as bad as some other bull mastiffs, but it honestly really hasn't been that big of a deal. Uh, as big of a deal as I thought it would be too, going into getting a bull mastiff. So don't, if that's the one thing talking you out of getting a bull mastiff, don't, don't allow that to be the one thing that talks you out of it because it's really not that big of a deal. Energy is the next thing that we'll touch on. And in the intro with this one as well, I kind of talked about um, his energy, especially indoors, is slowly decreasing. Uh, when he's indoors, he's pretty much laying around us, sleeping, uh, chewing on toys. Every once in a while, he'll kind of be a little bit high energy indoors. But for the most part, indoors, very, very, very mild, very, very, very lazy. But like I, I did say in the intro as well, when we are outside, he definitely will turn it up loves to do sprints, loves to run around, uh, but not for hours on end. You know, give him a good 20 minutes of some hard running or a nice like two, three mile walk at just a decent pace. And uh, then he's good. Definitely not a dog that just goes for hours and hours on end, but he definitely will turn it up and does some hard exercise and hard running when outside. However, on the flip side, like I said, when he's indoors, uh, completely opposite very very uh, low-key when he's indoors and it's slowly just going that way and I'm sure as he ages uh, it'll slowly start going that way outdoors as well so as far as energy goes he's definitely falling into that breed standard of uh, the bull mastiff where for the most part he's lower energy but uh, definitely especially when they're growing in that first year he can be high energy in the house and high energy outside of the house as well. So you got to watch out with uh, little kids, things like that. They uh, can tend to knock over little kids when they uh, are turning it up a little bit. Barking is the last thing that I touch on. And uh, same thing with this one. This is maybe kind of repetitive if you're a normal viewer. Bull Mastiffs are not known as barkers. They're known as a silent watchdog and Tua for the most part falls into that uh, standard. However, in our backyard, like I've said a hundred times in these videos for whatever reason, he likes to bark. And I just think that's because uh, one, like I always say, we have a big privacy fence so he can't really see outside of it to see what's going on. And then two, that's kind of his domain, his territory that he feels like he's guarding. And uh, basically outside of our backyard, he is silent. He's a silent watchdog like they're known as. Uh, backyard is the only situation that he barks in and I would say it's for a while I was saying it was increasing you know week to week month to month in our backyard as far as the barking where I was saying like pretty much every time he goes out in the backyard he's finding something to bark at I would say it's not every time now so that's even starting to come down you know uh, significantly I would say He's finding less and less things to bark at as he's probably just getting used to more sounds and things and not being able to see them. Uh, so if you're looking for a dog that does not bark much, at least in my experience, uh, that's that's definitely Tua, that's definitely a bull mastiff. There's just that one situation where he does like to bark and that's when our he's in our backyard. Otherwise, the front yard doesn't bark, out on walks doesn't bark. You know, if he sees people, dogs, anything, he, he just really doesn't bark. If the doorbell rings, he doesn't bark. He'll run to see what it is. But uh, very quiet and no barking, except for in the backyard. That is all I have for the 17-month uh, update pup date video. If you guys stuck around and watched it all, really do appreciate it. Uh, hope you learned some things. If you are uh, interested in the breed and doing research, definitely check out all my videos. And uh, thanks again for watching, guys. Take care.